Welcome back to this series on building a shopping cart with Node.js. I left it, well, this state where we have our product page and we could add items to the shopping cart, have a look at the shopping cart, see it here, see the total sum we have to pay. And well, I got this checkout button, which does nothing. Well, in this and the next videos, I wanna change this and I wanna make this checkout button work so that we can actually pay our items. Now, as before, I will do this step by step. And the first step is I wanna add a checkout view. So let's say a view which allows me to insert my personal data, my credit card data, so that in the next step, I'm able to actually make a charge on this credit card. Now to make a charge, I will use Stripe, which is basically just a third party service. You can visit it at stripe.com, which makes payments very easy and provides a convenient API to work with to easily, well, validate credit card data and then make charges on these credit cards. And you can learn more about Stripe on their webpage, stripe.com. And I will come back to this page, their documentation and so on later on in the next videos. For now, let's start by, well, building the view, which we see when we click checkout here. Back in the project for that, well, I'll bring down my console here. I will create a new view in the shop folder here and I will name it checkout.hbs. Now I already prepared some code which I paste in here and of course you will find the code in the GitHub repository which you find in the description. And I know there are some of you who don't really like this who would love to see me type every single line of this markup. But there are also a lot of viewers who say, and I'm kind of leaning on their side, who say that they don't want to see me type, well, what is this, 60 lines of HTML code, since this isn't really that, well, difficult and not really what this series is all about. So what I did paste into here is just some basic markup using bootstrap classes to create a nicely formatted form where I fetch the name of the person purchasing this, while well, the goods in the shopping cart, the address, the cardholder name, which of course might be the same as this name, but might also differ, the credit card number, the expiration month of the credit card, the expiration year, and the security code on the back of your credit card, this CVC thing there. Now all these fields also have their IDs like card name, address, so all the input elements have these IDs. And besides that, I only added bootstrap classes to make them look nice and some basic validation here with the required attribute, which is a HTML5 attribute, making sure that, well, these fields are actually required. So that's all this markup offers for now. Notice that the form action is not finished. It's just a slash here. That's not what I want to have in the end. I want to have slash something else later on. And also notice I have your total, which actually isn't displaying anything. Here, of course, I want to show dollar, well, whatever the user has to pay to kind of sum this up on this page too. So where, where shall we start? I think a good start is to actually output this total here and then hook up this action here to the, well, actual route to which I want to hook it up. So which I want to trigger upon while submitting this form. So let's start by outputting the total. And of course the place to start this is in the routes folder in the index.js file. In here, I will add a new route and to point out one thing which I also read in the comments. Yes, of course, it's not necessarily the best practice to store all the code in the routes file here. You may also create a new folder, which you call, let's say, controllers, where you then create your shop controller or whatever, where you then create new functions, which you export, that's important export everything with module export. So export an object which has the different functions. And then you would just call these functions from within the routes file here. That would be a more modular approach. I'm just keeping it all in this file to find the right balance between showing the best possible practice, but also keeping the code together and making it easier to follow along. And I hope you understand this. So what I will do here is I will create a new route 
which uh, should be a get route and which be, which should be sh slash check out. Now this will be the route which should load this checkout view I just populated with HTML markup. So here I will have my default function with request, response and next. And inside here, what do I want to do here? Well, first I want to copy this check here to see if the card actually exists because if it doesn't and the user just entered slash checkout in the URL manually, well then I don't want to display this page because we don't have a shopping cart. So in such a case, what I want to do is I want to basically render another page and what I do want to render is the shopping cart page here indeed. So that's just fine. Uh, just copying all of that check and rendering another page. Or even better would be, now that I think about it, to redirect the user to slash shopping cart to cleanly load this route then. But if we have a valid shopping cart and we're not reaching this code, well, in this case, what I want to do is I of course want to grab my shopping cart. I want to create a new one. That's the pattern we established, right? And then I want to render my shop slash checkout view. So this checkout HBS file in the shop folder. And here I will then pass a JavaScript object holding some variables to use in this view. One shall be the total, which I can fetch from my card, the total price. And the other data fields I will later on add will have something to do with possible errors which could occur during charging or validating the data. But for now I will only go with the total, go back to the checkout view and then here use handlebars to, well, simply output the total like so, right? One other thing I will also do is I will adjust this action here to also point to a checkout route, though this will not be the route I created here, not this get route, because remember here I have method post, so this will target a post route with a path of checkout. I haven't created that yet, but I will soon do so. Now in order to actually reach this page here, I also need to change something here in my shopping cart HBS file. Currently I do have a button here, but actually I want to make this a link. So I will use the anchor tag and I'm talking about this checkout button at the bottom. I will therefore also add the ref attribute and then of course I want to load my checkout route. Now this time since this will be a get request automatically, here I'm referring to the route I created a few seconds ago. So with this I'm restarting my server to see those changes. And if I reload my shopping cart page, it still looks the same as before because the session wasn't deleted. If I hit checkout now, I'm talking to the checkout page, which looks like that. And where I can now enter my personal data to fill out this. And as a next step to then make sure or give me the possibility of validating this credit card data with Stripe, with the help of Stripe. And as the final step then, of course, submit it as well. So that will be what I work on next.